Our 15th annual NSS town meeting is now in session. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Liss. I have the honor and privilege of serving as senior vice president of the organization. On my right is Kirby Eichen, who is chairman of the board of directors of the National Space Society. On my left is George Whitesides, our new executive director. Um, on his left is Jim Plaxco, our vice president of chapters. Uh, most of us, with the exception of George, are long familiar to you, and George, I think, will grow on you very fast. Uh, I thank you very much for getting up this morning uh, to come here for these town meetings. Uh, so this, this town meeting is an institution, I think, unique among space organizations. It's a chance where the... It's a, it's a place where the officers of the association come together to face their members directly to tell you a little bit about where we've been, where we're going, and most of all, to be available to you to answer your questions about where we've been and where we're going. And um, that's, that's basically what we're all here for. Um, I'll tell you a little bit this morning about uh, some of our upcoming plans again, in term, particularly in terms of policy. I think I um, might as well just start because he's new and doesn't know better. Um, we'll start with George Whitesides and let him give us a little bit more update than we got last night off. <laughs> At the dinner about where we've been and what we've He's just a boy. <laughs> we're, we're, there for that. But we're trying to get younger in this organization. And about where we're going and what George sees as our plans through for the next six months to a year and what he's looking forward to. George? Okay. Thanks, Jeff. saying that I think that this ISTC was a great success. Um, I had a wonderful time and I really want to extend my personal thanks and, and congratulations to the folks who made it all possible, in particular Claire McMurray. I've, after several days I think I've mastered your last name. Um, yeah, I think I have a solid grasp of it. I'm pretty sure what it used to be in Manchester. <laughs> um, and um, also, of course, Tom and, and everybody else on the team, just spectacular. I thought, I thought it was great. And just, just from the stem to stern, it was wonderful. So, thanks. Um, and, you know, thanks to everybody for, for being here. I think, uh, you know, it was certainly unusual to hold uh, a big space conference in Oklahoma, but I think it was a really great idea. And I think we all have come away with a greater appreciation of all the things that are going on in Oklahoma. Um, and so that's a, and that's, that's a great thing. Um, I know I enjoyed talking with the local companies. Um, I had breakfast with George French, who runs uh, Rocket Plane, uh, one of the prominent local companies. And um, of course, having Mary Fallon here, uh, the lieutenant governor, was an honor. And I think. Uh, for to try and build that relationship in the future. In terms of the National Space Society, we've got a lot going on. Um, uh, a lot going on. And looking forward to having as many people as possible involved in what we're doing. Um, you know, we opened the conference by noting that this is a really remarkable time for space. And I think the conference reflected that. You know, we saw... Um, how much activity is going on in suborbital space flight. And um, that's really, I think, going to be a, one of the major focuses of the society um, over the next period of time. If we want to do what we can, great. Um, we want to do what we can to, uh, to, it's like presents are being opened on the right thing. It's very distracting. Um, we, we want to do what we can to promote this and to get our members into space. And this zero gravity flight is one of the examples. But we're also going to be trying to do much more. You know, as many of you know, the X Prize flights are expected to be this summer sometime. Um, when is not exactly clear. And uh, we're talking with X Prize about trying to get our members some special deals related to the summer events. Um, everybody's best guess is that the first attempts are going to be out of Mojave, California. And uh, those of you who are interested may want to even consider coming out for those flights. Um, some people talk to talk about a 
some kind of sort of a Woodstock for some some orbital space, like you know the summer space. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, I'll certainly try to be there, and would love to see as many of you there as possible. Uh, obviously, we've got the legislative conference, the Moon Mars Blitz coming up, and I've been really encouraged to hear how many people are thinking about coming. Up. I think we're going to have a really strong NSS presence, and that's going to be wonderful. I mean, on one level, it's just going to be wonderful because we're going to have people from 15 different space groups there at the same time. I've never, I don't think I've ever been to something with 15 different space groups, you know, at one time. So, uh, all right, put it away, put it away. Yeah, it's a secret. It's, a secret. it's cool stuff, is what it is. Put it away. So, um, thanks for bringing that over. Um, but, um, you know, that's. That's going to be uh, a big deal, and it's going to be a really fun deal. So I, I hope as many of you as possible can come to that. Um, moving sort of forward in the year, as, as you know, I think this is the 30th anniversary of the National Space Society, and sort of next year will be the 30th anniversary of L5, from what I have been told. So um, we have a sort of an interesting um, opportunity to celebrate um, both organizations, the roots of this organization, for a full year. We'll be doing sort of themes around that for for uh, for the whole year. We're going to try to throw a uh, sort of a celebratory event sometime in the winter, um, which should be great, um, and uh, which should uh, attract a lot of attention, I think. We will be pushing both the Moon Mars Initiative and Suborbital sub Space. Um, I think they're both important to what our ultimate goals are. And I think it's important that we had a sort of a renewed commitment to the roadmap to this, this uh, ISDC, because I, I think that's a really th that's something that makes um, National Space Society unique, and that we've really thought through how do we, how do we break down these barriers to get ourselves uh, a spacefaring civilization. And so I'm looking forward to the results of a, a new task force that we've got that will sort of figure out how to implement the roadmap. I don't know how many of you have read it, but it's a really great document, and I commend it to you. Um, I think that is all I'm going to say for now, with the proviso that I want to reserve some time at the end for something related to that box. Uh, I like the, this time to turn the legend microphone over to Kirby Eichen, uh, Chair of our Executive Committee, former President of the National Space Society of Australia, for pers perspective on the state of things uh, outside of the United States. First of all, I'd like to add my thanks to everybody for being here. Um, if you're like me, it seems you haven't been in bed before two for several days, <laughs> so it's increasingly difficult to, to get up in the morning. Um, just I'd like to add, before I talk a little bit about the international perspective, just from my own point of view, just as an NSS, forgetting your background where you come from, I've been with the NSS and its predecessor organisations for 19 years. And in fact, I joined in 85. I, I became chapter president at the first meeting that I turned up to. And uh, I had to do my first chapter newsletter just post challenge. So, it was a fairly rocky introduction to um, the pro-space movement. But in all of those 19 years that I've been in space, I cannot remember us ever having an opportunity like we have today. As far as I'm concerned, and it's been from my own perspective, we've been waiting for somebody to say, let's go back to the moon and on to Mars. And your president said that. <laughs> and it's almost like shock. <laughs> for all this time, we've been trying to get a statement like this, okay, there's a long way to go to actually translating that into action and making it happen, but, and maybe it's just my external perspective, but it seems to me for the first time in my pro space days, we've actually got the first stage of what we want. So that's a positive thing, but it also means that we've got to be very, very energetic in trying to translate that into reality. So that's kind of just a, a global, it's my personal perspective, um, and that makes it an extremely exciting time for us. If I take the international perspective, 
it generated an enormous amount of interest all around the world. Uh, the, the coverage in Sydney, my home city, in the mainstream press, the newspapers, television, everywhere else, even from the pre-announcement excitement when the word got out that something was coming, it attracted a lot of attention. And the best that I understand that there are a lot of other countries around the world, I believe France and Russia in particular, have kind of put their hand up pretty quickly and said, hey, we want to be part of this. So that's all very encouraging. Um, it's going to take some time, I think, to try to establish exactly what things that each of us can do, and in particular the members elsewhere around the world. And it's wonderful to be able to say that we've had people here at this conference from Australia, France, Ireland, England, um, all of whom represent different constituencies of the National Space Society. I'd like to quickly touch on something that George noted, which was the roadmap. And I personally think that the roadmap is an incredibly important and powerful tool for both the National Space Society and also for opening the space frontier. Because it's only when you sit down and really, really think about the things that have to change or <coughs> the things that we expect to see along the way towards the spacefaring civilization that we want, once you look at what we see or what we believe needs to happen, and then you think about the change that we need to create or induce, it's only at that point that we can really be truly effective in the activities that NSS and its membership needs to undertake. So during the committee meetings, and believe me, I've been to more committee meetings than you can poke a stick at in this last couple of days, um, it really came out quite clearly that we need to complete that roadmap process. We got sort of through a strategic level, and now we want to delve down to the tactical level. And the importance of that is that at the end of the day, we can identify, I think it's up to 15 roadblocks at this point in time, and each year you review things a bit more Sometimes you add another one or take one away, hopefully, as we achieve them. But you can look at those particular roadblocks and say, okay, exactly what do we have to do to remove them? And you take that down to a tactical level. And the, the beauty of that is that every one of you, either as a, an individual activist or as a chapter member, um, can play some little role. You can find some activity that you can do that helps you or helps us as a group overcome one particular barrier along the way. And that makes it much easier and clearer for each of us to know exactly what we need to do. It also makes it easier and clearer for us to track what we're doing. So even though we have a pretty long-term objective, we can see that we're making clear steps in that direction. So now we have a, a kind of specific opportunity before us. We're going to try to complete the roadmap. Um, that's not a simple task, so it's not going to happen overnight. And in fact, one of the things that I find wonderful about NSS, and I see it in no other organisation, and I belong to a number of them, but I put all of my time into the National Space Society, and that is that in trying to create a space for civilization, a space settlement, you need people from every quarter of life. So whatever your skill set, whatever your background, you have a role to play. And getting down to that tactical level with the roadmap will hopefully uncover exactly what role you can play in this grand uh, adventure and vision that we have. So yes, I'm very excited about this, even though I've been around this society for a long time. Uh, this is what I feel like a grand opportunity for us, and I think that engages our members internationally as well as obviously here, sort of the, the heartland of the space movement. So that's about all I'd say for the moment. Uh, I'd like to turn it over now to Jim Plaxco, our Vice President of Chapters, for some observations on where the heart and soul of our society is, the field. Jim? Thank you. Can you all hear me okay back there? Huh? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Welcome to my club. Huh? Welcome to my club. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, where to start? Uh, uh, chapters are su is such a big field because it's such a large component of uh, National Space Society, especially when you consider that you know, for the most part, it is our uh, one of our primary points of contact with the American public. And that is, as I believe, as it should be. Because, you know, there's nothing like having the personal touch 
uh, in a business. Businesses emphasize that. And for us, our business is educating uh, the public about uh, the value of space exploration, about the knowledge to be gained there, about how it can improve uh, everyone's lives. And uh, that's why I'm in the NSS, so that I can help uh, share my knowledge uh, with the public uh, and do my little part to contribute to helping us all to create a space for civilization. And uh, what I would like to really see for the coming years uh, is more cooperation between the chapters, more sharing of information because we have many chapters uh, that have very successful projects and I don't think we should be bashful about asking them, how did you do that? And we've had 2003 was a, a not a bad year because we picked up several new chapters uh, and we also uh, reaffirmed uh, our relationship uh, with one very old standing and very active uh, space organization, the Minnesota Space Frontier Society. Um, and I would hope that we can continue uh, the streak of growth into the future. And once we all get caught up on our sleep, go back home re-energized um, and really uh, relate to the people who couldn't be here just what happened, share our experiences, and see if we can't make it harder to pick out the uh, winning events for next year's chapter awards, make it really challenging, or maybe make it so we have to get all 20 awards to chapters because we've all done such a great job. Thank you. And uh, I'd like now to turn over to our, our newly joined fifth member panel, uh, Cliff McMurray, uh, who aside from this scurrying around the last year trying to help make sure this thing came out as well as it did, serves as our executive vice president and is our chief poli policy ramrod. Cliff? Well, I don't think anybody's ever accused me of needing a microphone, so uh, <laughs> I won't even attempt talk in that direction. Um, some of you who know me know that I keep a file of quotations that I like and add to it from time to time. I suppose I'd like to share a couple with you from that file. One fairly old and one recent. And, and the older one is, is by Pericles, who said 2,500 years ago, just because you don't take an interest in politics doesn't mean that politics won't take an interest in you. Somebody is out there, a lot of somebodies, with a different agenda than ours. Who wants to see a different kind of future than the kind of future that we want. Somebody is out there actively promoting their idea of what the future should be. And if indeed we want to see our particular future come to pass, we have no choice but to enter the arena of public debate and try and persuade our fellow citizens and our elected officials that our version of the future is the one that ought to prevail. Our charter says that we are in the business of creating a space faring civilization. It doesn't say that we're in the business of wishing for a space faring civilization. It doesn't say that we're in the business of watching while a space faring civilization is built. It's for us to build. The more recent quote, uh, which applies to all kinds of things, uh, is, is an Arab proverb. It says, the dogs bark, but the caravan moves on. The caravan does indeed move on. The caravan is moving on. The question is, in which direction is the caravan moving? And uh, are we the barking dogs, or, or are we driving the camels. Okay. So one thing that concerns me a great deal in, in looking at the, the uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, the Chinese symbol for crisis is uh, danger and opportunity in the same, combined in the same ideograph. Is that correct? Let's just say so. Yes. I believe that is correct. And, and, 
And that is truly what we have now because we have, have tremendous opportunities and we do have tremendous dangers, not just the, uh, coming at us from, from the, the direction of uh, politicians who don't want to see money spent in this particular way, but um, in the form of a very widespread attitude from, from uh, one end of the country to the other that nobody should ever be allowed to die. <laughs> you know, we are going to lose people. We've lost a few already. And if we were really doing it right, we would have lost even more by now. Uh, and this is going to happen. And when it happens, we have to be prepared to make the argument that it's okay for people to die in the pursuit of what they, of noble things or even ignoble things as long as it's what they want to do with, with their lives. We all have the same mortality statistics. It's precisely the same mortality system. statistic. One person, one death, sooner or later. And so the question is not, does any of us get out of here alive? It's a question of what we do with our lives while we're here. And a different attitude has arisen, I think, uh, I suspect, because Although the absolute lifespan, as some part of Potter said to me this week, the absolute lifespan has not really gotten much longer, but the average lifespan over the, over the last generation or two has increased quite a bit. So it's, it's possible, I think, that one of the reasons why this aversion to risk has occurred is because people have more to lose. They're not dying at a younger age, so they want to preserve all their years. It's okay for people to do that if, if, if they want to stay at home themselves and be safe. But it's not okay for them to say that other people can't make a different choice. And that's, I think, a really important message for us to carry. Is, is that for those of us who want a future that has more risks and more glory, we have a right to do that. So I hope you all come to the Washington Legislative Conference. But it's not just about the Legislative Conference. It's, it's, a, it's a long, sustained battle to change the way people think. And that's what I have to say. You know, it's uh, often been said there's poetry in space. And um, I think some of us may be surprised to find that there's such eloquence here right there down in Oklahoma on this panel. Uh, nice, nice, just nice phrasing, very good thoughts. I'd like to add a couple of things. Again, my appreciation to the people in Oklahoma City who work so hard to provide a gathering place for us all here. These conferences are important for a lot of reasons. First and foremost, it does allow those of us who are out laboring the vineyards to come together to remind ourselves that we're not alone out there, to recharge our batteries, and to give us hope that we can go forth and actually produce something during the next growing season. Um, next year, I think we will build on this. We're going to be in Washington, D.C. for ISDC 2005. And Washington is a unique location for any ISDC. It's, uh, it's like it's like going to Rome, we're going to Mecca. We go to Washington, D.C., we're going to the fulcrum of power where things can actually change. There are, there are things we can do in conferences in Washington, D.C. that we can't do anywhere else. There are things in Washington, D.C. that should attract us and make us flock there. Uh, this, is a, this is a crowd. I notice I've seen many of you at conferences for 10 years. If, we, if things fall into place, we might finally be able to be our attendance from 10 years ago, get back into the four figures range. Uh, we, we should have a great time next year. I expect to see all of you there and each one of you bringing three or four of your colleagues. Uh, we can do great things down there. And um, 
you probably haven't heard a lot of it, but there's an awful lot of out-of-the-box thinking going on down there, pioneering new directions for us. Which gets me to one of the most interesting insights that I had here at this conference, and I either thank or blame Dave Stewart for this. Uh, when most of us, us in this room got started in space advocacy, this was basically in the days before the internet and before the multiplicity of space organizations. So if you're interested in space, basically there was only one organization, other than perhaps the Planetary Society, which liked to send cameras places, uh, and there was only one source of space news at Astra, or whatever it was then called. And uh, so it was pretty, it's, in a way it was pretty easy for us. If you're interested, come to NSS. We will provide information for you. We'll provide something you can do to help get the space movement founded. Well, it's a different world right now. There are 15 people in this coalition, other space organizations. We have the internet, so people don't have to wait for a monthly, bi-monthly, or quarterly magazine for the latest of what's going on in space. And it, it organizationally, things are diluted. Um, Kirby pointed out yesterday at one of our meetings that we are the only organization of all the space organizations whose real focus is space settlement. We're not interested in low Earth orbit commercialization. We're not interested in this particular place versus that particular place. We are interested in getting the human species off Earth. So our organization has a unique function. We help all. In that sense, we're a big tent. But we, we were the ones who have to keep the focus on space is for people. Space is for growth. Space is to constantly increase the number of people off Earth. And that is our unique mission. That is the thing we focus on. That's the thing that makes us different from all other organizations, or if you will, it's the thing that makes us special. Some says, why join NSS? Is because we are the organization that's dedicated to promoting the better future for all of us. Between our legislative conference and the ISDCs, it's really important that we get there, show the flag, and help bring attention to the movement. Um, this legislative, this legislative year, has been pointed out, is really crucial. We've been going along a meandering path that sooner or later, someday, might get us off Earth into the stars. And suddenly, someone has said, "Look, there's a new pathway opening up here." If we step off this path, off where we've going, take this new pathway, we can cut off decades of getting there. And then there are people who say, well, do we really want to do that? I don't know. Well, this is the opportunity we have to force the country to take this new pathway that this administration pointed out for. It. It's a real crux. If we can get the NASA budget done and the congressional redirection, we will set the country on this path where they will acknowledge, yes, we are going to space. And Hopefully, we're going to space to stay. And once we start it, well, it may go faster, it may go slower, but we will at least be going in that direction. If we do not take this path this time around, we may be on the meandering path for a lot longer, another 10, 20 years before an opportunity comes up again or becomes politically acceptable to propose it. That is why it is very important that this year, for the first time in a decade, we actually have a chance to do something. And we've got to take advantage of it. Now, I know that everybody is not going to be able to come to Washington for the legislative conference. But we're going to make plans that if you can't, at least you can do something in your home district. But this is crucial. We're a fulcrum point in history. And it's basically up to us, the believers, to do it. Um, I think that we've all had our chance to say what caught our mind. Now it's I'm going to open the floor for people who have questions, suggestions, recommendations, or any other quality of oral expression that you think is polite and appropriate. Or nonverbal communication. <laughs> we can understand that too. It sounds like. Okay, Jim. I'm glad that you touched. Why don't you, when you stand up and you speak, would you please state your name and chapter affiliation, if any? Stand up. Or no, you just say your name chapter. Jim Spellman, uh, NSS Western Spaceport Chapter. Uh, I'm glad that you touched upon, uh, with the advent of the internet, that people can get their information when you mention uh, launches and, and certain things like that. With regards to Ad Astra, uh, I'm glad to see that they've expanded the, the pages for the uh, chapter contacts. Yeah, at least slightly 
larger print for those of us that are starting to get uh, presbyopia. But, uh, you know, since you do mention that, you know, anybody now with the internet may know when launches are, I'd rather see the, the launch space stuff of Ad Astro. Since it's listing stuff that happened two months ago, four months ago, I'd rather see that stuff reutilized and list more of the uh, context within NSS as far as the, uh, the, the chairmanships, the committees, points of contact, email addresses on these individuals, in case there are people out there in society, let's say you have a public affairs committee, obviously if you have folks in the society that have a public relations bent, uh, they may be able to contribute to the committee. Uh, same thing with you know, space advocacy or legislative affairs or fundraising, uh, things like that. There isn't any real listing in there other than just the name of the board of advisors, the board of directors, the board of governors, but they don't give a, a, a contact as far as a mailing address, an email address, a phone number uh, for any of these uh, officers or, or chairpersons of these uh, committees, or even agendas uh, as far as when meetings are going to be taking place, whether it's the board meeting, uh, board minutes, uh, those type of things. I think uh, being a little bit more open uh, with the society members will retain some of the membership and actually contribute uh, to the great cause. Could I have a quick show of hands here? How many of you think that the, the typeface on the interior of Ad Astra is okay, but the typeface on the first several pages really stinks? Am I the only one who thinks that? How do you feel about it? <laughs> I, I, well, I, I may be a minority opinion, but I mean... Which part don't you like? The front, the front? The, the front has that real thin, spidery kind of <laughs> writing that makes me want a magnifying glass. Actually, that's before he's had his beard. <laughs> Uh, I may be a minority opinion on that. I just wanted to. Obviously, we didn't have an overwhelming show of hands. So. Well, I, I tell you what. Uh, 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 you have to identify yourself, Claire, before you can speak. Sorry. <laughs> Claire McMurray, Oklahoma Space Alliance chapter. <laughs> and I have to tell you that um, used to be. I didn't bother reading Ad Astra unless I wanted to look up some contact information or something. The last couple of issues I really wanted to read, got a little bit of red and then lost them before I could finish. But yeah, that very thin type is very hard to read. I like a lot of contrast folks. I'm wearing trifocals. There is a reason why Times New Roman is the most popular. Oh. And, and it's fine to look different, and I don't care if it's a slightly different font, but I do want it to be visible. Um, when you first came in, uh, John, uh, John Strick, uh, Austin Space, right here. Uh, when you first came in, you were talking about some upcoming events, and Kirby suggested, I think made a good suggestion, that there should be some kind of a uh, listing, perhaps something on the website, of upcoming space-related events. And I thought maybe, for example, you know, on the web you can color code your different topics. You can use like one color for organizational events, another color for manned space flight events, and a third color for unmanned events or whatever. But it gives, just gives people a way to quickly find the events that they're particularly interested in or concerned with, but have it all in one list and seek them into the future. Put that on the website and people can uh, see what's, what's about to be happening and give a, it gives them a clue as to what's upcoming right away and what's coming up in the near future. So that's something that's something to consider uh, putting on the website and various people can send in events that they've learned about and they can integrate it. If I could just add to what John was saying there, the, uh, what spurred it in my mind was that we were talking about Cassini and I remember um, when it was launched being approached by a couple of different television stations and at the time NSS had put out like a fact sheet and I was amazed, I mean I'm not a scientist or an engineer, I was amazed watching the TV interview afterwards how knowledgeable I could sound 
talking about this, having done absolutely nothing about it in a technical sense before um, those television interviews. And so it would be, in a perfect world, a combination of both a calendar of what interesting space events were coming up, um, combined with hopefully a little fact sheet that could go behind that that a chapter or an individual could take. And if you know that there's an event coming up, you can be a bit prepared for it as well. I mean, you can base activities around it, or you can simply respond in a, in a public relations or public affairs sort of sense. Or damage control as far as the anti casinos right. the new right. year. Uh, there's, a question, there's a question back there. Uh, Kim Quay, uh, I've tried to join the Cuyahoga Valley Space Society three times in the last year, but haven't succeeded yet. <laughs> Would you like to form your own chapter? <laughs> <laughs> Where you, you don't know how rural I am. Oh, hi. Uh, I'd like to, sorry, to pick up on the gentleman from the Western Space Alliance's uh, points, um, uh, which he also made a couple days ago. Um, um, Rochefort said 400 years ago that almost all our failings are more, um, uh, uh, how it, uh, you can forgive them more easily than the means we try and use to hide our failings. And, um, <laughs> so, cover up. <laughs> well, I mean, in other words, computers crash. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing unusual about that. There's nothing, there's nothing unforgivable about that. Most of them, I, if, if my own personal experience is most of the members don't really know what's going on, except that the magazine is coming out less Often, they're kind of confused about uh, what's happening in Washington, D.C. Um, and remember that for a lot of the members, particularly younger ones, a 30-year-old member wasn't even born when the NSS was formed or the L5 society was formed. And if a, a young uh, a gentleman that spoke yesterday uh, is correct, and it, uh, Mr. Eichen is quite normal among space advocates, and that is the, the uh, data that Lou Friedman of the Planetary Society collected said that the Planetary Society, National Space Society, overlap in membership is between 25 and 33 percent. So that so the a large percent or large the in other words, Von Braun and O'Neill and Sagan are all dead, okay, if you're under 30. So a lot of the a lot of the, the, the fights that occurred in the 60s and 70s and 80s for someone who is who is 90s and the millennium, it's very hard for them to understand what those what those fights are all about. Um, so I think the gentleman from the Western Space Alliance, a lot of his suggestions, I think, are very good. Um, so, wait, I'm not totally sure I understand. So, because uh, I want to make sure that I, I think you're raising some really good points. But so, um, so my my impression of what Jim was saying was that he was talking about you know putting uh, information in about uh, contacts and. Um, and, and stuff like that. But he also spoke a couple of days ago at yeah. the chapter meeting to simply an information the letter from the director uh, explain this to the letter. He, and okay. also there was debate at that particular meeting as to whether it ought to go to all members or just right. uh, chapter heads. It, I don't think I don't think the specifics matter so much as the as the point that he made earlier. <laughs> Regarding Ed Esther for a moment, uh, I understand. Thanks. We're looking at some some various possibilities. We do have a limited financial resource to put the magazine out. And we would like we would like if possible to, to trim that without losing the quality of the magazine. And we would also, if it were at all possible, like to bump the frequency of the magazine back up to buy a monthly. I mean that would be a wonderful thing if we could afford to do it. But the question is, how, how can we do that? And I, I would like to see, if I may take a, another couple of quick polls, how, how many people would rather see the, the magazine come out six times a year and be slightly thinner? Would, okay. 
how, how many people would choke if the magazine were not quite quite on such glossy like paper? If we went to something that had really good color reproduction but was was not quite so um, fine a paper. Well, keep the outer wrapping. Yeah. Yeah, the outer wrapping should be glossy. Right, but but the as long as the interior color reproduction was still good, we could we could possibly go to a, a slightly less fancy paper. How many would go for that? I would think as long as the content is kept high, the the, in, the information is, is was essential. <coughs> Okay. Well, it's a pretty picture. Uh, well, I think the pretty pictures are good. That does help. I think there's a segment of our yeah. readership that that's important. The ooh ah factor. Yeah. And, and, copies of pretty pictures. And, no. and, and last of all, uh, as a third option, how would how would you all feel if we kept the magazine just the way it is, trimmed costs a little bit, but managed to get out a say a four page newsletter in the off months? Mm -hmm. How do y'all feel about that? You mean like supplemental? Um, yeah, a supplement. How do you, would, would you prefer that to getting the magazine itself more frequently? <coughs> I think it's a representative group of that. That's fair. Yeah. That's <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it's, it's not, but it's a data point. Call it the L5 Zeus. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to it, but an online version. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. Yeah. quite a few people. Take just online rather than the dark out. You know, we've looked at that, and basically what we've determined is that those magazines tend to wither away and die. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. It's just, it's not an option, I don't think, at this time. It's not the, uh, the, job. the content, to me, is really important. It's not just being very, when you say content, it's very, very broad. So, what I'd like to see, uh, as you probably noticed, I have my, the name of my panel, track of panels was Pathways to the Space Frontier. But it's to try to emphasize the, the fact that there are different pathways and that people have different ideas of what we should be doing and how we should be doing it. And open debate and discussion of these issues is one of the healthiest things that we can do. And not necessarily the, saying that the NSS has to endorse any particular position, but simply bringing the discussion of the different possible ways to do it out into the open instead of trying keeping it under cover as if, as if there was never any debate or discussion or disagreement on things. That's not the way human beings work. The human beings are always dis discussing and debating and sometimes disagreeing and sometimes agreeing. So one part of the content should be the discussion of different pathways. And it should be also current events, future, mid-future events, and far future events. Like we ought to have, you know, like discussion of the moon Mars, and every issue or so, we should have something about what's going to be going, going to be going on 50 and 100 years from now. So we have a sort of a full spectrum of the of the current events and future events. Can I ask you a question? A question here. I know this is very unspecific, but just in general, if I gave you a choice of the content, the general content of the magazine, if you said very satisfied, satisfied, somewhat satisfied, or dissatisfied, can I just say a show of hands, how many people are very satisfied with the content in general? Very satisfied. How many would describe themselves as satisfied with the content? How many would describe themselves as somewhat satisfied? And how many would describe themselves as dissatisfied? Okay. Our lost brethren from Minneapolis. <laughs> um, okay, and that's just some guidance. Uh, clearly, basically, as it looks for, at least for our group of poor people, we seem to be doing the right thing, but we're missing something that we could be better. I would like to see you, when you get home, to drop an email to our friend George here <laughs> with basically suggestions of what you think Ed Astra could do differently. I think we have a committee that's also been looking at this. And this would be a good data point for them. And this is your chance to influence the magazine of your society. Now, see, uh, if all the committee information was on the web or in the magazine somewhere, yeah. you could go directly to them when you did something like that. That's we're, what working toward, we're working towards something like that. But, you know. Okay, Jeff. That is, that is one of the things we're doing. I don't know how many people are aware of it, but now uh, the 
NSS website is being developed uh, and maintained by us. Uh, the people who are doing it are all chapter activists. And that is one of the things that has come up in our discussions is about uh, expanding uh, the amount of information that's on the website uh, with re additional information that, help, that would be helpful to chapters, contact information that would be helpful to members, especially with regards to the various committees, who's chairing those committees, and we also want to see uh, an expansion of content uh, that's available there. And there are also some other really big things that are in the works uh, that should become uh, available uh, both to our members and to our chapter leaders that they would all find very useful. And I'll leave it at that. Meetings like board meetings, uh, executive committee meetings. I know there's some things you have to black out because there's no But there's a lot of stuff in there that, that would well, be information, maybe some of the, the membership wants to know. As to the content of specific meetings, that would be uh, a decision to be made by that particular committee. However, since the committees uh, and their members will be made known to the members. There's nothing to stop you from writing to uh, the people Not or the chair of that committee. And, anyway, I've taken your note. I, I hear it, and we'll we'll try to move in that direction. You want to talk? We continue the thread about Ed Astor. We move to a new thread. I'll take questions on any Ed Astor. Ed Astor. Okay, Claire. We had two people yesterday who wanted to join the National Space Society. Couldn't just give them a membership for sure. That had the old address on it and the old prices on it. We'll take the old prices. Just, just, just a minute. So what I did is I put on my best reading glasses, looked for the tiny print of the contents page that said how much it cost, took a sticker with the new address and put it on the thing and handed them that. Uh, we, we need to have something a little easier to find about new membership actually in Ad Astra and I would strongly recommend a downloadable membership for sure that's kept up to date on the website. Thank you. Are you on the Ad Astra thread, Larry? Yes. Okay. Because we have other people on the next thread, so I'm watching. Go ahead. Larry Ayer, Chicago Space Frontier L5. <laughs> I, want, I, I just want to say that uh, Ed Astra has gotten better uh, the last few years in one respect, but we need to do something about us uh, in the sense that a lot of uh, nonprofit organizations, they talk. You get their magazines, there's a lot about what those organizations are doing. And when you look at ours, you see a lot about what's going on in space, but you don't see very much about us in our own magazine. We need to expand with the <coughs> chapters and what NSS is doing. We see the conferences, but like Jim was saying, we need to see what we're doing between the conferences, the committees. We need to see all the things that are happening out there that we're doing. We're excited here, but we go back and we don't tell the world about it. We need to tell, this is an instrument that we need to tell them what we're doing. More people may buy into the family. Sorry. Thread, I'm sorry, I'm going to go You're up first, Jim. Then, then Scott, and I think we'll move to another subject. To piggyback on what Claire had suggested, just so everybody is aware, I had already forwarded to George a preliminary template membership form, uh, which uh, George uh, more or less agreed is, is something that's necessary. I'm going to, once I get back home, back to my office tomorrow, Tuesday, I'll be uploading that to Jay Whitman uh, so they can convert it into both the PDF file as well as the Word document that I currently have. It is a one sheet, 11 by 14. It's actually styled after the Planetary Society throwaway form that they had at air shows and various other venues. But to go a little bit further with that, I think when you get somebody who's coming in off the street and has never heard of the National Space Society until they visited the website, or if they've been to an event where they've seen the brochure, I, I fear that most people, being from the general public, get sticker shock when they see the price range 
on here. And the same thing with the pull down menu as far as the various prices of membership. I think if you just to at least get their, you know, the camel's nose into the tent type thing, you want to just stick with a basic membership price, either the, the individual rate and the senior <coughs> slash student rate and an international rate. Forget about the buzz all the accounts. So, you know, some of these students, five thousand dollars, they're going to walk away from you. Uh, you see the one thousand visionary. You, you do that after they become a member. That's where your direct mail goes out, and you say, okay, if you want to contribute more to the society, here are some of the programs. I think, this, you're, uh, I, think, I think you're in the right direction. In fact, some of the latest brochures we prepared for on top have membership and then additional contribution. Right. And then they can do whatever they want. And you really don't need, I mean, this additional yes. space could be deleted and something else put in there. Just give the basic information of the benefits as far as the one year subscription to Ad Astra, you know, opportunity to join a chapter, participate in the society's conferences. Let me just say that that brochure was done only by a previous executive director who disregarded the memberships committees and the outside experts' recommendations. Also, on that topic, I would just like to mention that uh, someone did come on the website the other day and sign up at the $1,200 membership level. <laughs> You're going to get this, but I think the vast majority of the people, as far as the general public, are, are folks that are in your lower to middle income uh, families that have kids. And I've had folks that go, geez, I can't afford $38 or, or $45 for regular membership. And I'll say, okay, do you have any kids? Why, yes, I do. And I go, well, then great. Put it in your child's name. They read your Sunday comics. Why can't you read their magazine? Jim, Jim, let me ask something. For those who are selling memberships directly, because of the chapter rebate system, just anybody who sells has the authority essentially to give a rebate on the spot. And they can sell it for a lower price as long as it's over the $20 minimum that goes to headquarters. But for practical purposes, we still have to have one official price in terms of what your membership dues. And one of the things we're talking about in board meetings is having periodic special offers on the website. If you sign up this week, it will be X dollars. It won't change our base rate, but we may find ourselves doing this offer more regularly. We'll just, we're going to test all this stuff. And that's at the same time, I caution you that you should also try to remain at a level of parity with the other organizations that are out there with their membership rates. Because if somebody goes National Space Society, $45, Planetary Society, $35. I know, but it costs more to lift people than it costs to lift cameras. So. But we were understanding. Scott, you have the last comment on this thread, then we were going to thread. I kind of want to go back to what Larry Ahern was saying about, uh, by the way, Scott, you have to the Minnesota Space Frontier Society. Now a chapter again of the National Space Society. Yeah. So uh, and, uh, I do uh, appreciate the fact that a national organization can certainly accomplish more than a, uh, a small chapter. Uh, but the, what I'm dissatisfied with that ask is that it doesn't say enough not only about what we've done, but what we're going to do in the next year. Uh, when I tried to look to find out where the conference was this year, when I looked at an old issue from last fall, and I couldn't even find out the national in there saying where the uh, conference was this year. So that kind of information in the news or in the uh, magazine would be extremely helpful, Plus, not only for events like the, uh, the National Space Development Council uh, conference, but all the other small conferences that are going on uh, around the country and any special projects that are happening. Uh, so I think that's that's my main reason for being dissatisfied with that aspect. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delay the next okay. on a different yeah. subject. We can come back to this if we have more time. But uh, remember, in the immediate future, one of the easiest things to remember is George at NSS.org. <laughs> I mean, it's one of the it's simple and it's easy to remember that George is a clearinghouse, but until we get this broad distribution. And, and as an editor. Also, but again, the suggestion could go for George, but George is the one who gives the editor guidance. I mean, so initially, it's, it's, it's good for George to get a feel, as he's new to the organization, what you guys think about it so that he can work with the editor uh, rather than being bypassed. Jim, may I clarify? Um, I grew, it, uh, was he, um, um, communication to headquarters. It doesn't need to go to George. Send it to NSS HQ. If it's administrative, so if you're off your membership, of course, it won't happen anymore. Don't walk to George. Send it to NSS. Yeah, 2,000 emails a day is going to be quite a 
many things like that. It's like a suggested change. But all that has to be in the ASCA as well as on the website. Well, I had a question. Well, it does not relate to it. But Dale has a score on that. She's okay. the next person. Okay. And there's Peter, and then we can come back to you. Okay, Dale, I have a collector and factory clerk at the room. There's any of us left. Uh, yeah, George and I were discussing uh, earlier that uh, NSS should have a web log, or as they're called, a blog. I think this answers a lot of other questions that come up on things which have immediacy to them. Uh, I think that is a good place for uh, the director to put out, there was such and such a meeting today with a link to where the, uh, the text is stored or the, the list. Uh, there was such and such a launch today, uh, here link to an article on it. You can have very, very current information. You don't have to put a whole lot in it, you just put a sentence or two to link to where people can get the source. You make an SS become pretty much the place to go to find out what's current. And also, uh, it's the place where people in society can actually find out what's going on. There's that single point. It's sort of more gossipy space news. Yeah, basically, yes. And what can additionally help with that is that several of our society members, long, very long-term members, uh, myself, Glenn Reynolds, Branson Burke, all have major uh, web logs. Uh, if there is something that comes up, and George pushes, uh, sends basically a note to us that there is something, uh, we could push a lot of traffic onto the NSS uh, blog. Already in the works, Dale. Yeah, co op them. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're already us. <coughs> they have a rather large audience. I mean, Ransomberg has transcritical okay. musings. Forgive me for suggesting we could call that blog uh, George Basie. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's still <laughs> taken. There's already a George Basie. Peter, did you have something back there? You mentioned the chapter rebate system a while ago. I would like to see a show of hands with those people who have had good experiences with chapter rebate systems. <laughs> there's some suspicion that chapter rebate is an oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> well, for I think we need to do something different. It's, it's, for the record, I believe George is riding the herd on making sure that this rebate system starts working again. George has pledged his life, his fortune, his sacred honor to make sure that <laughs> Because I know some chapters like mine, that's their own, basically their only source of revenue, is the rebates. And uh, we go out and bring in some people, and it's our revenue. And it finally got to the point, I, would, uh, I wouldn't send it direct forms, I would send it a letter saying, here are these people. And then if I was lucky, I remember I would call headquarters, do you have these people, where's my check? And then finally I realized my life was too short. Yeah. And I just said, to hell with it. And then we said, why don't we bother? You know, we'll just sell members. We happen to meet people in the person. We're not going to do it in order to make money. So, George. Duly noted. We're working on this it. This is probably the longest standing, most <coughs> severe irritant in chapter headquarters relations, I think, of anything in the organization. And, and, it's, and it's good for a great many drops. Yes. On that subject, um, we finally have control of the website. <laughs> that, that, that is chapter after this, and there is a pull down on the website um, for, 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 for uh, on the form. That, so, so when a member goes to join, he can say what chapter he, you know, he is he is with, and at least the right code will get into the database. In the past, there were a lot of errors where. A membership form would come in and there was no chapter indication or the person keying the information omitted that, you know, that chapter information and it, it was just an administrative problem. And at least now one of those steps has been automated. And, and I don't know about other chapters, but our chapter has no idea what our code is. Well, oh. well, okay, okay, okay. But, but now we don't need to know. If you go through the web and tell them to do the pull down, to, to specify the chapter, if they specify the chapter, then at least one step should should no longer fail. It doesn't guarantee the other steps. <laughs> I should point out, if I may just interject, I picked this form up from your organization right here at the ISBC. And right where it says for chapter news only, I see no stamp that says Oklahoma Space Alliance. That's because we pulled it out of the wastebasket. We got it here. <laughs> and all we all we had a chance to do was have to put the sticker on. But I've been to other yeah. SS events. I've I've been to Oasis events, and they yeah. have their the same forms, and they don't even bother to put down 
Oasis or any type of yeah. identifying tag that yeah. I can, I'm the one that usually goes around whenever I do my events and I'm either so, or writing. So, right so, so, so when, to, when you put the one on the website that we can download and print off ourselves, put a part where we can where we get to enter so that the whole thing is a PDF where we can enter right. a chapter. Yeah, we're much we're going to do. We're going to put a brochure on the website where we download it just as soon as we can. Over there. Um, step two. Identify. Please. Ben Nolte is on chapter. Uh, step two, what Bruce is talking about, is that when someone signs up online or in the mail, directly to national, from an area where there is a chapter, the chapter leader should be notified. You get an email or something saying, so and so joined. Somebody just like that. So we, we have our own um, mailing list. We send announcements to our, our local people. And if I don't know someone joined, they're not going to get it. There's some. This is a, a long-standing chapter request, and I've been on both sides as a chapter officer and as an NSS officer. Part of the problem is essentially geographical limitations. Um, if somebody were to join where I live in Naperville, Illinois, I'm not so sure my chapter should get a notice, or maybe it should. When we have an event in, in the Chicago area, if we have the money we want to send out a mailing, we'll make a decision for this event, how far out do we want to extend the mailing list, how many we want to send, and so forth. We sort of do it on an ad hoc basis every time we need it. If we want to recruit members to join our chapter, we might do that once a year, at which time we would, in the old days, we'd go into headquarters, they send us the current labels. So the thing we had six months ago becomes obsolete. Now with the system of names being available, you can get the names Periodically, you can do a periodic sweep. You can ask for headquarters, what's the current list two months, a month before your next meeting, and then you send them out. Um, I'm also not sure you really want your mailbox cluttered on a, or most chapters, you want mailbox cluttered on a one on one basis and have the computer decide what's close, what's not close, or if you have several chapters, which chapter gets noticed. Well, these I are don't know about large metropolitan areas, but in most other places in the country, you can get software that will tell you. Let's say the zip code for March after 85749, anyone within 50 miles of 85749, I should know about them. Yeah, I know. One cool thing, Ben, is that uh, our database now has that capability. Um, we can tell how many people are within, like, you know, 50 miles of you. And so I think what we'll probably be able to do is to say to chapters, you know, we need to define, like, a region, you know, which will probably be, like, some circle around somebody's thing. Some, somebody's place. And then there's no, I mean, this, this is all potentially automatable. I mean, so if you want all the emails, you know, I mean, it'll take us a while to work on it. Bruce, the system Bruce talks about, someone selects to drop a menu, says, I'm in southern Arizona. Automatically, the yeah, yeah, totally. should get me. Yeah, there's no reason why not. But, but Randall should really speak to it because he's the one who's been programming. Saturday night, a, an email was sent out to every single chapter leader with the entire list of current members in their state or in their region, if it was a region within the metropolitan area. So that system is now operating. Uh, I didn't get mine, but uh, I have another Peter got his. Well, that's because you haven't identified yourself. You probably got a cousin. I was on the list of times. You want to every... Can you identify yourself? Ben, uh, he's a uh, space right here. We, we literally went through, it was actually Sunday morning at, at 1 or 2 a.m., but we went, we went through the Ad Astra, latest issue of Ad Astra, the chapter contacts list, and for every chapter we sent, uh, set it up to send an email to the person listed as the chapter contact. Are you in the chapter contact list? He wasn't the chapter, then. Uh, I think we were by about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> No, but what were you in the in the latest issue of that Astra? Oh, well, we were. No, 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 no. Okay, so we'll 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 get just drop off the information with us, and we'll get it to you guys too. It's, it's yeah. already been dropped, Remember, I think. Well, okay. The chair, the chairman, needs two pieces of information. Eventually, they need if the person is currently an NSS member. They also need to know does the person wish or wish or not wish to be contacted by the local chapter. Yeah, so that's that, a, they need to have that check box on the form. It says, please have the, the chapter, local chapter may contact me or 
Please don't contact me. What would you recommend as the default? If they don't check the box, the default would be no contact or the default would be contact? Yes, yes, yes contact. contact. Yeah, yes, contact. Yes. Okay. So in other words, you want something to say, um, I am not interested in joining a chapter at this time. Or something like that. Just so, just so that we don't contact somebody who irritates you. Okay. There's also some laws about that. You can always contact your own members, I think. Let me ask you a question while Josh Powers is in the back room. Uh, we've now had uh, close to two years' experience with NSS inside uh, NSS an online report. Let me ask you the same broad <coughs> question that I asked before about Ad Astra, is generally as to the content. Very satisfied and satisfied, somewhat satisfied or dissatisfied. All those who are very satisfied with the content of... Hey, Jeffrey, maybe we should ask who gets it. Because I think the what? answer is going to be a lot of people don't get it at all. Well, let's, we'll get, all right, well, that's what that's check that out. Okay. Check ask it first because that's if, you don't, if you don't get it, you won't be able to vote. Uh, how many people get it? How many people get it? I don't get it. How many people read it and get it? Get it? Uh, <laughs> all right. Here, so the first question is, those who get it who are very satisfied with it, those who are somewhat satisfied with it, you skip satisfied. I'm sorry, you skip satisfied. No, satisfied. Somewhat. Satisfied is second category. Somewhat satisfied. Dissatisfied. Okay. <laughs> um, I like what Josh There always has to be one again or does the thing. Does the thing <laughs> we, we talked about ways of improving at Astra. While Josh is here, can we have some discussion and ways that you can think that NSS online report can be improved? You're up first. Uh, identify, please. Waller, I'm a, not a member of any chapter. Sure. I think the magazine. Sure. No, I think the magazine will work. And for my job, I'm not supposed to be either politically active or getting involved in things. But they have certain rules to say. Okay, we'll People read the magazine, they like it. And when they go to the website, all they see is the magazine there. They don't see anything going in depth on the article. Or if they go to the website, I jump on the website, and I bring the magazine in, it's the same as the website. There seems to be no difference between the two of them. Now, the magazine, I like. I don't get it as often as I figure I should. But I go to the website, and the same articles are right there. There's no difference. OK, you're looking for additional content on the website, in other words, right? Either that or okay. bring in something that clarifies the articles in the magazine. The, the, that's not the philosophy for the way in which Ad Astra was uh, put on the website was to give non-members who did not get uh, the magazine a chance to preview, in a sense, uh, for example, you've got a table of contents so you know what type of information is in the magazine. There are a few articles that are made available on the website so that non-members can basically get a sneak peek at the magazine because Addy Astra is not sold on newsstands. So the only way you are actually going to see that magazine is if you get it from having been given it by perhaps a local chapter, perhaps it's at your library, or perhaps you have a friend who reads it. But I suspect that most people have not had a chance to see it. So before they buy into the organization, we're basically offering them the opportunity to say, you know, one of your one of your membership benefits is at Astra Magazine. Here's the table of contents. We are now adding back issue table of contents so people can actually get a little bit better feel for what the magazine is all about and what type of content it has to help make them uh, or help them make a better decision. Uh, do they want to join National Space Society? So we're trying to do this as a service to non-members. We were talking about the online yeah, okay. report. Yeah, okay. Can you yourself, please? Oh, Dick Fetters in Tucson. Uh, personally, I prefer to archive stuff from the online report as opposed to keeping the magazine. You know, if there are physical limitations for the storage of that. Yeah. So my wife tells me. <laughs> <laughs> Other comments about the online report, particularly about the content, the mix, etc. I have a complaint about the subject line. I was getting that thing for a long time before I realized it wasn't junk mail. And I learned to 
for such and such. What the heck is that? That's, it, that's generally not what we use anymore. Generally, the subject line these days is NSS online report number, issue number, or something. I know not, in the past we did use NOR. That's not what I saw the last time. Just for no, the record, sure the last one was NSS online that's report. Right, that's Josh Powers, a member of the board of yeah. directors and the editor of NSS online report. Yeah. Continental Europe, for example, we might might look at 
being active through a professional level involved, through engineers, aerospace participants, etc. Um, I think the biggest thing, though, is simply being sensitive to the, the broader uh, scope of activities going on elsewhere. Let me give you another interesting example: um, the, the relevance of the Chinese Taiwan <coughs> launch um, last year. That is perceived very differently in other parts of the world, and um, we need to appreciate what that, how that is responded to in other parts of the world. And uh, if I just give you an interesting analogue of how the Australian press picked that up, um, and and so this is a, a, a um, journalist from the biggest newspaper in Sydney. When that was reported, the way they reported it was that there were now three countries in the world that had put units into space, only two of which could do it at the moment, which was Russia and China. <laughs> now, that was an interesting perspective. Um, and so there are sensitivities uh, out there, and we need to appreciate that um, other people around the world would view things in a different way. I'm glad you mentioned that, because, you know, we wanted someone to talk here about the Chinese space program. I went so far as to contact a professor of Chinese who said, well, uh, you know, maybe this person could help you. And, and Brian said, well, these people at the Chinese embassy maybe can help you. And we don't think never got any prior I'm not sure we ever asked the right people. Now, Brian said, well, don't ask the Chinese embassy. Ask these organizations to keep watch on what China is doing. Well, I really I really wanted someone from China. Yes. And I don't know if I even would have been allowed to in the current, uh, I just never pursued it far enough. And I don't know if we were even would have been allowed to in the current uh, security situation. One of the more time intensive aspects of trying to plan an ISDC. <laughs> yeah. <Jim>. yeah. <laughs> but <coughs> HQ could kind of keep uh, more contacts available for those of us who. Actually, when it comes to ISDCs and other events, when it comes to inviting very high level speakers with national implications, who, if A invites them, might impact the efforts of B and C to invite them, all kinds of contacts like that should, in the first instance, go through headquarters. Headquarters are aware of those efforts. And secondly, with all due respect to George, who's still new on the job, it's been our view in the field that those, those those are things that headquarters is uniquely positioned to help the people in the field on. They have the accumulated yes. experience, expertise, and contacts. Exactly. So if ISDC 2005 wanted to contact Chinese, they would probably be coordinated through headquarters. Yeah, that's what we tried to do. And it wasn't under George. Yeah. So, we uh, have a but, but, but with a little more energy on our part, we might have been able to push it farther. But is that the kind of thing you're talking about? It operates at a number of different levels, yeah. I mean, somebody remarked to me, and it might have been Nicholas, sort of said, well, this is an international space development conference. Why is it all about what's happening sort of in the US? Now, that's not true, but, but that was the perspective. Uh -huh. And uh, um, yeah, there's a lot of interesting things going on elsewhere in the world. Um, and frankly, there's a lot of it that people just simply don't know. So what you don't exactly. know about, you can't. And that's why it ought to be at the ISDC. So, and it ought to be in that Astra, and it ought to be in NMR, so that people will know. Right. right. Jerry? Uh, I'm here at Eric from the Chicago Space Museum, and the Sea Journal is I'd like to know, could we have an international report in the Ad Astra? Get a reporter from uh, various put a little ad in that says uh, Australia is doing this uh, in their country, uh, China's doing this, Spain is having this. Uh, just a little uh, report from the front uh, from another country. It's an idea. Sort of little yes. To be quite honest, we actually had that at one point, and I don't know what happened to it. So. Yeah, I haven't yes. seen it lately. <laughs> Well, it might be a very good idea. I agree. I think that's a very good idea. And I think we'll have to look into what happened to the previous arrangements. But uh, it, and it's also, you, to some extent, 
it's up to the international members of the society to feed that process and pass information on. Sadly, if you look to the Australian comment, it would be extremely short. So there's nothing happening in Australia. So, but clearly there are a lot of other places. There are a lot of things happening. There are a lot of places that are where things are happening. talked about the, the cultural differences and everything, and I think we can probably take a page of what goes on here in the United States in that there are certain cities that have a sister city that is in a foreign country. And I think maybe the chapter leaders can take the lead on this and they could have a sister chapter uh, that is one of the international chapters. So maybe there could be an arrangement between like Western Spaceport and Adelaide. That's a cool idea. That's or, a or, very cool idea. You know, Oasis could have a uh, sister chapter with uh, Ennis of France. I'll go you one better. American chapters should help form a chapter of the country to be a brother sister chapter with. It's not, and we did that before. We did that in the past, and again, for whatever reason, I don't understand why it's sort of fallen into disuse, but I suspect that's simply <laughs> happening at the chapter level. That the people who are responsible. It was a chapter level that never yeah. got on. I mean, I, I've tried to communicate with the, with the especially the fantasists of Australia from time to time, or sometimes like the emails that I've had in the past get bounced any time I try to send something to Michael James. But uh, I always try to keep a, a line of communication going as far as what's happening over here, you know, launches at Vandenberg or you know, something like that. We had a question over there? Yeah, uh, with due respect for me. You said, uh, you said that much happened in Australia. I disagree. Uh, wasn't Australia on a low budget to beat up NASA's high budget when it was right there, didn't you? Well, that's true. Uh, <laughs> that, yeah, it's that, that's one isolated example. Um, and that's not being done at a national level, that's being done by a university. <coughs> and uh, the expectation is that that program will probably migrate out of Australia the not too distant future, which is what tends to happen with things in our country, sadly. But you're right, there are things going on, but at this point in time, there isn't a single space activity that our members can relate to in Australia, and that's one of the difficulties that certain countries have. I mean, our members are interested in the long-term goal, and, and so we're not necessarily interested as much in what's going on in Australia, but as how we as Australians can contribute to the long-term vision. So what's actually happening in your own country isn't necessarily that important. Uh, it's, but there are times where we overlook relevant things going on in other countries. What I want us to do is just watch the movie, The Dish. The Dish. Yeah. I love the movie. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, any other questions here for Kirby? Before he goes back down the line. Worse than down under. Really going well. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just want to throw out something for thought. Um, we could have one, uh, on the web maybe a single page handwritten in some language, um, German, or, you know, French, Spanish, whatever. Up at the, at the top of the main page, it says you know, Espanol, Deutsch, etc. And link to that one page. Um, and, 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 but, but you want more than that. Um, I wonder if these automated translation things are almost good enough that we might link Not in my experience. Australian is very close to American English. <laughs> 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 I'll second that because I, that's uh, what I've had to resort to in order to yes. uh, find out what the content was of the German Space Society site uh, and NSS France because I speak neither language. Um, um, and I, it, however, there, you know, you guys, just we have an idea. Maybe we can arrange links to the foreign websites rather yeah. than the translation. Okay. That their own German Space Society website. Well, the best thing we can do is find a yeah. member who actually speaks yeah. so, the language so, so, and ask them to translate. So, yeah, you're leaving the second, the second part of mine. Let's find a 
similar organization in another country, even if they have no affiliation, if they have just similar goals. So, so our handwritten French will say, you know, well, French is a bad example, but, 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 but we'll, we'll get a little bit that's well written and then say, we recommend the following, you know, organizations and websites in your language. We'd probably refer without a recommendation. Well, you know, we're living in the 21st century. We could probably ask our members in other languages to give us a nice little paragraph. It, it typed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, translation. It's like trying to get Chef. Yeah. And the link is a great idea. I, 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 I sure wouldn't find people to translate in one page. In one, yeah. And I don't want to translate the whole website yeah. and all the press releases. Exactly. But, but one page, yeah. Are there any other comments here for Kirby? Questions? We don't have one for Al. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go back to, NS, to NSS online report then. Thank you, Kirby. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs>
even, even volunteer activists have a certain saturation point, and I think it's probably good to hit them at least two or three times a year, if not quarterly, but if you exercise them too hard, you're, you're going to start out. getting tuned out. The boy cried wolf. Depends a bit on whether you expect them, on just what you expect them to do. I mean, accept information is one thing. Write a daily letter oh. is something else. <laughs> I consider a legislative alert something that, that requests action on the part right. of the person. Right. Information left in a or something. Alerts or action. John, speaking of legislative alerts, that's probably the Space Commission will to its report as early as June 2nd, certainly by June 11th. So we need to be aware that we may want to respond or at least issue letters of support or agreement or disagreement or whatever to this. I assume there's going to be a press conference somewhere in Washington to cover it. And to maybe cover it on NASA TV. We will probably we will attempt to uh, tape it and, and report on them, whatever critical aspects may, may be. But the, the individual people can respond also. That will, that will be helpful. Jim, is this for me? Well, yeah, it, it, I think it could be a policy type thing because we need to get input from NSS. And that's the suggestion I had talked to you and, and to Jim about as far as uh, getting the chapters to request uh, meetings with the editorial boards of their local papers. In, in some communities, it's just the editor of the paper, but in other larger cities, you actually have an editorial board which is comprised of leaders from the surrounding community. And what you want to do is you want to go in with that audience and present the NSS case with regards to the vision of uh, force space exploration and why uh, the editorial board should come out uh, in favor of whatever the recommendations are going to be. Are you looking for editorial support or are you looking to alter their news coverage and make it more sensitive to space issues? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, identify yourself, please. Probably in a minority here. Identify yourself, please, for everybody. Uh, I'm John Mark. professional archaeologist for 30 years, but uh, I support the space program since I was a kid. But uh, I just wanted to address the board as a policy <coughs> that you think of about a little bit. I've been concerned for the last couple of years that not being a part of the board decisions, um, how much effort of the total organization are we putting toward the ISTCs? I don't want to see us become just a to the convention sponsoring organization. So what I'm suggesting is someone who can do it, maybe analyze how much of the whole organization's effort percentage-wise is going on into the ISDCs as opposed to anything else. That's a good question. Um, and as any former ISDC chairman can probably tell you, not that much. We have in the past essentially delegated most of the ISDC functions to the local group that's hosting it. One of the things we are trying to do, we're trying to do, is bring more of the core functions into, nat into the national leadership so that we have a similar look and feel every year, one that would be uh, more consonant with other organizations around the country, and particularly trying to bring programming at a more national level to take all the burden off the local people where we have a broader pool of leaders who know where the, where the bodies are buried, where the speakers are. But uh, for the most part, um, also previously registration was a big problem, took a lot of manpower and that stuff. The increasing computerization has really lowered that burden and become mostly automatic. Um, the ISDC, though, has been known basically as our flagship event. It's the one event that, in a sense, brings the attention of the space community to us. It's, it's our time to have a focal point. And what we do with an ISDC is up to us. And in its essence, um, it's an area which I think the board is going to increasingly focus on is how we can use the ISCDC in itself to further our NSS purposes and vision. And there's another that's an area we have not really done as we've been putting out fires, and we're going to go toward that right now. I hope, does that answer your question? Okay. All right, I've got to take off. I thank you again all for all your wonderful work over so many years. Um, 
Now, I'm looking forward to seeing you in D.C. As I said, with each of you with four or five colleagues, and preferably with a lot of younger colleagues. Uh, we really, really want to inspire the younger generation not only to be in favor of space, but to realize that here is a platform and a vehicle where we will give them a chance to actually make a difference. We are not a real monolithic organization from the top down. There's a lot of opportunity for people to come in this organization, and we're, our job is to try to empower them to help promote space in the way they feel is best for them. And they come to the ISDC next year in Washington. If it's anywhere close to what we expect, they should come away really galvanized and, and expecting to, to do great things, and we're going to try to help them do that. Thank you again. Uh, enjoy, uh, I'll turn this over to Jim. Because uh, George has to take notes, and George has to speak. But uh, <laughs> please come to the NOR stuff. This is a big chance to get okay. input on this, so it should be there. Thank you. I think we should minutes. We get about 15 more minutes. Um, so who's who's next? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Jim Shane Calder. I'm a new NSS member. Of talking to me yeah, if there's okay. no chapter in Iowa. And, so uh, don't leave here today without this. <laughs> if, so if there's a list available of attendees or even members in Iowa, it would be great for me to be able to contact and maybe get some of those. Are we producing a member of uh, uh, attendees list? Well, well the database is HQ uh, entered it. does allow us, well, it isn't a database. That's the trouble. It's a spreadsheet. Uh, but there is a separate column for state that someone is in, and I know that spreadsheets can sort of be converted to databases with quite a bit of effort. I would recommend keeping it as a, as a database next time. But since we didn't have that many people, yeah, we can run down the list and uh, and then search you out if anyone else is trying. Yeah. Larry, did you want to add to her answer? Yeah, I want to add to something. You know, uh, when we look at our uh, database, not only for chapters want to go through in their area, but someone wants to start a chapter, we, you give us a zip code, we can tell you the whole state, we can probably pick one who's within 30 miles from the US. Yeah, but he's looking for another activist, baby. An activist might, the people who are here are more likely to be activists. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, what was your so, uh, next question? Yeah. That issue was going to get resolved. See, see me afterwards, okay. And uh, I just wanted to compliment the people on the conference great conference. I got a lot of good information. There was one particular session I was interested in, and I don't know if it was from a, a local development or if it's a, a national program, but I was interested in the session called Colony of which it was a, an effort to uh, have people with new ideas, perhaps not commercialization of ours, the group I'm with, it has to be an education, but to be able to go to a group that's knowledgeable and say, hey, this is a good idea, this yeah. is a good idea. send in information and uh, get some type of response and know who to contact. Uh, so I'd like to see something on the incubator type of thing. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe continue. And uh, go online. I've always thought that trying to do it through an ISTC maybe start things, but it doesn't. Would you, uh, Jim, would you like to be involved and work with me a little in, in terms of uh, Helping to flesh something out. I mean, we could develop a little group of people who might contribute. Yeah. Uh, so I, I sent a couple letters to the national chapter previously. Previously, they came directly. I never got a response. I sent stuff to the national or NASA commercial thing. All right. Well, we'll get your response now. Greg, Greg Allison, our uh, chair of the executive committee, has been very active in previous rounds, but of course, that's exactly why he wasn't that. But he might be able to help you get some. I think it's great. I Please get your name and email address yeah. on that piece of paper so I can contact you. And, and the final issue uh, is on education. Again, I wanted to follow the education track here. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot. It was very good. What was 
here, but it seems to be very concentrated in the uh, elementary <coughs> education, and uh, we're looking at post-secondary and post-graduate education. And we're doing a very unscientific survey that's not published yet, and uh, I mean, we're still getting information, but it looks like there is a market for 30-somethings. The average age of respondents is 30 years old, and uh, they're looking for what we were offering an interest in maybe a year and a half to two years of continuous education and willing to pay in the neighborhood of seventeen thousand uh, dollars per year for that uh, education aspect. I would like to see more education beyond just uh, for people getting involved and okay. beyond the second Yes, okay. Uh, that uh, a small group. <laughs> He's a member of the education committee. First of all, as president of the Golden Gate Space Frontier Society, listed in Ad Astra in Region 2, I just received from Randall Severy a list of all the NSS members within 100 miles of my home zip code. So it doesn't sound, I don't know what's going on here, but it sounds like we're, we're getting the database together and able to provide that kind of information to people who want to start chapters. So I recommend you probably contact George and get it set up for you. Secondly, as education chair, or chair of the education chair track at this ISDC, and as a uh, founding member of the current iteration of the education committee, I took on the adult education portion. And trying to put together this education track, there wasn't much volunteer. It was an elementary. Going through the education committee meeting Saturday afternoon, uh, most of the people are school teachers. I have to constantly remind that I've been uh, tasked with uh, reminding the chair of the education committee that education is a much bigger field, as you're saying, than just elementary schools. Education is educating the entire population of the United States, especially from our point of view, a small subcommittee, small subsection of the U.S. Congress, <laughs> and then providing resource materials for school teachers and for kids, which I'm going to do with my personal website. You're absolutely right on, and I'd like you to send me an email address or email message. These are the addresses in that asteroid. And uh, I'll put you on the distribution list for the education committee, and, and let's make it happen. Uh, Jerry Grass, you had your hand up? Well, uh, I had my hand up because I wanted to let him know that the education committee was just formed. And um, I'm working on it as part of the for the um, elementary and upper grade school level. We have someone for the colleges and we have men for the adults. And we are going to try and get information out that will be helpful to you. Uh, let me Next, can you please uh, identify yourself? Yes, Brad Sellers from San Antonio. And on the website work, I was just wondering, is it going to uh, totally change the look of the website, or is it just some enhancements to kind of, I'd like to see it stay consistent. I'm just curious if uh, it's going to be a total. Uh, that, that's an issue that's going to be addressed. The capabilities of the website are going to be enhanced. Uh, there will be uh, new features, new capabilities here, especially for uh, with chapters and things for members as well, but we are going to be doing this uh, based on our chapter volunteers who are now in control of the website, so you're going to have to realize that the <coughs> amount of time that they have is a finite resource, uh, and you're looking at uh, a, a good chunk of the core of our volunteers are here in this room today with Randall and Ronnie and Arthur and Dave and where's Bruce? Uh, so, uh, myself, so we're the ones who are going to actually be doing uh, this work. And to, but to come along and just totally re redo it, uh, it would be a lot more work for you. I mean, I'd rather see it be consistent, you know, and just refine it. Well, that's, that's one of the things we, are, we do have to do is to uh, prioritize our tasks. So for that reason, we had a strategic planning session Thursday night 
to give uh, the, everyone was invited to that session, and it was to give uh, people the opportunity to say what they thought was important about our website, and then to rank uh, all these different things. So everyone had a chance to vote uh, as to what should be the purpose of our website. Uh, we had uh, extended meetings Friday morning, Friday afternoon, so this is something that we are taking very seriously. I, I'm somebody who doesn't, doesn't get to go there very often, though. Yeah. When I do, I'm satisfied. Except for the one when you all talked about is the, is the, the membership section, trying to kind of find that. And yeah, sure. that was kind of I think the main thing is just trying to make the information as clear as time and then trying to talk to people. Thank you. Uh, John? Yeah. Just to continue on the same thread briefly, uh, most of you are probably aware of the spacereft.com site. And it's a, sort of a mecca for people to get information. And we should try to do some of that same thing so that people become familiar with our website and the source of information. And that the sample, the, like the timeline, the calendar of upcoming events, especially immediate events, uh, it would be a very good addition. To that, but that's just sort of the aspect of attracting attracting people that would let let, let them know that we exist and uh, provide a source of information. Uh, the isn't space Thank you, John. Like one of us. Uh, Jim, your question. I was just going to say, isn't Space Ref run by one of us? And Mrs. Uh, I I think. Uh, now, I'm he's drawing a total down. blank on his name. I have no uh, idea. He, 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 he is one of us. Is he a Keep calling. I, I don't know if he's currently. He, he may have been, but I, in the past he was a member. I don't know if he's still a current member of NSS. Well, like I said, we need to bring him back into the fold with these and, and, and co opt him with these. Absolutely. Uh, we had the Senate with their hand raised. I, I do need to do something. Um, okay. So I want to make sure, I, I would like to make sure we have a little time. So, yeah, no problem. So, um, uh, so if we could maybe cut it off after maybe one or one last, two last what? comments. Who wants to? Yeah, Jackson? One thing that I've noticed is that the board have a tendency to assign only board members to any active um, committee. I think it's important that it actively mostly non board members from any committee. The board members should be leading, not being the foot soldiers as well. The, uh, the people who've been doing the work for uh, getting our website up and running on a volunteer basis have yeah, been composed uh, of a mix of board and non board members.
at least minuscule revenue from that, and, and we need to find new revenue streams anywhere. Now you're not Andrew. talking about the Mars Society that they're sending out via their uh, Yahoo Groups distribution, in which case all the revenue is going to Yahoo and none goes to us. Is that what I'm talking about? Well, I didn't think Google emails had. Well, I, I thought. Uh, I tend to skip right over this and get to the meat of, of the thing, but at the head of every single release that the Mars Society sends out, they've got some ad or other. And I don't know if, if uh, it's... S send me an example because we also are investigating uh, converting NOR into an HTML-based uh, newsletter versus its currently text-based newsletter. We went with the text because we were concerned about the fact that there are people whose email software has difficulty parsing HTML. So we wanted to make sure that we didn't leave anybody out. And, um, and, we, we, and we are still concerned about that. We think there may be ways to provide both. Right, which is what's requiring the extra effort is to ensure that everybody is happy. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much, and I'll turn th things over to George. Okay, um, so I think we're going to sort of close close this now, um, but I want to just make sure that I emphasize that uh, indeed you can write me an email, and uh, if you don't get a response immediately, you can call me, um, and the number's on the website. My email is very simple, it's just george at nss.org, and uh, Let's start talking. There's stuff that I can do. You know, obviously we have a limited amount of manpower, but uh, things that you feel strongly about, we can try to try to integrate in. The thing that I want to do is I'm instituting a little bit of a new tradition, which is I have my own sort of personal awards for a few people that I've been working with. Um, this may not be particularly interesting to people who haven't been doing stuff, but you're welcome to just sit in. Um, but I, but I also don't want to bore you, uh, you know, with um, with that. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the people in the conference uh, uh, committee and also uh, people that I've been working with stick around for a little just because I have a small little thank you for them. And um, I know Peter wants to thank you. Yeah, uh, just briefly. Uh, we were under orders not to lose money this year. And uh, <laughs> I, I think we may have done it. We won't know for a few days. You will succeed. <laughs> Uh, as part of this effort, we decided not to have merchandise available here for you for sale. We got samples. Uh, what we did is we put a very wide variety of things, mugs, frisbees, shirts, sweatshirts, coasters, a wide variety of things available on Cafe Press as, as ISDC merchandise should be available for three or four more months. So as you leave, I'm going to hand you one of these cards. If you wanted ISDC merchandise, especially in a size that we didn't have here, uh, please go to Cafe Press and have it sent to you directly. Uh, if we do have a few of our samples left, so if uh, you wanted a Frisbee or a coaster or a size large, whatever we have left, uh, see us, we might have it, and that way you wouldn't have to worry about it. Part of what you did was actually a good execution because it so you less manpower to have to deal with merchandise. Yeah, the manpower we really sure yeah. yeah. But also we don't have a stash of stuff that is oh, unsaleable right. like the uh, Voyager t-shirts from sometime in the 70s for back when we were in Ohio chapter or 80s. Dale? Yeah, just a suggestion that we can probably work through with the web team. Now that the ISDC is over, there is a little logo space on the on National Space Society homepage which I think should now point to wherever you've got your thing for selling this stuff. No, it's going to be to the ISTC 2005. Speaking of which, well, actually, yeah, there's some more to the ISTC 2005. Last chance to get the $75 registration rate. Thanks for coming.